I've been asked a few times how I colour my stamped images, so I thought I'd share that with you today. Uh, now, I'm not a professional colouring by any, ch any means at all, but uh, there are a couple of techniques that I use um, and that I find quick and easy. Uh, I've started with this image that I've stamped just onto normal cardstock, and I have stamped it with um, stays on ink pad and the reason that I've used stays on is because it, it's it won't blur the edges won't blur when you start coloring you have to be careful when you're stamping your original image that you choose an ink that's a permanent ink so it won't bleed in when you start adding uh, ink and water and things like that but on this piece of cardstock we're going to use a, a blender pen and it is just imagine a texture with nothing, no ink or anything in it. That's basically what this is. And I'm going to use a stamping up pad, but I will also show you how to use the distressed inks on this as well. So you just pick up a little bit of color and start coloring. And the, the key is to layer. So start off really lightly and then you can build up your colour as you go. So lay down a foundation of light. And then go back over to make key areas darker. Just for a bit of shading. So when you've finished with the colour, all you have to do is just wipe that off like that and that will come clean and then you can go on with your next colour which in this case will take some pretty pink and we'll start down here on the bell of the flower again lay down a light foundation of colour and then gradually build up your shading and in this particular one I will probably change to a, a shade darker pink and just And just pull that across. Like that. Now I'm going to stop that one there. And I'm going to show you how to get the same effect using your distress inks. Uh, it's, it's much the same. But We'll take an, just an acrylic block and your ink pad and just swipe that like that on there. So you can see now that I've got some green on that acrylic block and that gives me the ink to pick up for colouring. And it's just exactly the same technique. Layering a lighter colour on the bottom and then either taking a darker tone over the top or using the same colour but l putting another layer to get that shading effect. Now the, the second technique that I use when I'm colouring is water colouring. This is actually my favourite technique. So I've stamped the same in image onto some watercolour paper. I have got an I use an aqua brush. You just it, they're brilliant. You fill this 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 unscrews. You fill that with water. And it's just like colouring with a watercolour brush, but you don't need the tub of water there. So there's water running through there and what ink am I going to use? 
Okay, for this one, I think I'll show you using the Distress Reinkers. Now, you just need. No, I had it right the first time. A drop of ink on there like that. And we might take a light. A lighter purple as well. And we need green. Now you can colour this doing the same with your acrylic block like this, like like I showed you, and you can use your aqua brush for that, and it works see exactly the same. Because we're working on watercolour paper, it allows you to get a lot more layers of colour in because it, it, it absorbs the water. It, you have to wait for each layer to dry, but you can really get the shading going on watercolour paper. But you can also use the ink re -inker like I've done there. Now to clean that off you just wipe it on a piece of paper like that. And then you can start on your colours. Now I'm going to drag this down just a little bit so I just get a light, lighter shade to start with. Because you can always build up your colour after. And then we'll go again and we'll just go over and darken that up a bit. And you can see there how the colours darken up. And then if we go the darkest colour and pull it down a bit so you don't get a big dark blob on your brush to start with. And then you can darken up as you go along. Now I wanted to also show you just one more thing. Going back to using your normal card, you really can't use water on that. It, the, it's not very forgiving. The paper won't absorb the water. But you can use your aqua brush empty. So here I've got my aqua brush. It's got no water in it at all. And so I can actually colour with that. A lot of people use paint brushes, but I just like I've got I feel I have more control over the aqua brush. And as I said, you it's good because you if you're stamping onto just normal cardstock, you don't have to worry about water not seeping in and then it all smudging and looking a horrible mess. Because you've got no water in here. This is just like a dry paintbrush or a blender pen. If you haven't got a blender pen, you can use one of these. That's the way that I colour my images. Thank you for listening.